Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. The 2014 Hiki no Awards recognized and honored the best Hiki no stories from the 2013-2014 school year. Last week, we featured this year's winners in the middle school division. In this episode, we'll highlight the winners in the high school division. But first, let's take a look at the major event that led up to the awards. They say, you're just a kid to keep your head down and listen and learn what you're given, but you have a story. Bullying isn't acceptable. With people and places and feelings and faces when all you have is a note, you have a story. What culture do I live in? In the late nights, the dark mornings, the minute you wake to the moment you nod, you have a story. It's waiting for that frame, that bite, that perfect line, that thousand word picture. My family and I, we are considered homeless. And it's there. We're all human beings and we should all be treated equally. You're a kid with a story. The world awaits. two-hour compilation of all stories nominated for 2014 Hiki no Awards was screened for the public in August at theaters on Maui, Hawaii, Oahu, and Hawaii Island in the first annual Hiki no Festival. It gave students who had worked on nominated stories the chance to showcase their work on the big screen for the people in their own communities. Tonight is really a celebration of all the great work on Hiki no. Are you ready to get started? The screening at the Consolidated Ward Theaters on Oahu drew hundreds of Hikino students and teachers. Also in attendance were industry professionals and stakeholders in Hawaii education who expressed how impressed they are with the quality of work they've seen in Hikino. As someone who's a strong supporter of public schools, I think our students are brilliant. And actually, the, the higher standards that we create, the more incredible pieces come out from these students. So in that sense, what I'm looking at when I watch Hikino, there are some that are just very, very top-notch professional storytelling, one, um, and great shooting and wonderful editing. There's been so much wonderful talent coming out of all the schools. The kids have so many great stories to tell. And they find a way to tell stories that are true to themselves that speak to the broadest possible audience. So I think it's wonderful that you folks have given them the platform in which to show off their work. I just think that it's, it's such a good opportunity for students to be able to showcase their work on like, a local TV level and that Hikino is actually putting students' work out there so that all their stories can be told and they're giving us a voice so that we can speak on television. I really feel having these talented kids who are vested in this community and giving their heart and soul to what they're doing is what is going to guarantee our future is going to look bright. And I can't say enough about the inspiration that that gives me because they're telling their stories. You know, what's so amazing is the work that PBS Hawaii and the whole Kikino team has done to, to take the level of what the students are doing to a whole nother level. I think when I watch it or when other people watch it, you don't think you're watching some amateurs or some young people do it. You, you just think of like these high quality, great storytelling, um, compelling stories that are really emotionally like gripping and grabbing your heart. I think Hikino encourages a lot of pride in your community and your school, so you tend to look for those stories and you tend to, you want to tell those stories. I think that's what Hikino encourages students to do. Less than a month after the Hikino Festival, the judging scores from a panel of broadcast and journalism veterans had been tabulated. 
Then, on September 17th, PBS Hawaii President and CEO Leslie Wilcox and Bank of Hawaii Foundation President Donna Tanoi announced the winners of the 2014 Hikino Awards in a live, online-only awards ceremony on pbshawaii.org. In this episode, we'll take a look at the nominees and winners in the high school division of each category. <laughs> the first award is for best news writing. And judging in this category was based on the following criteria. Did they tell a compelling, well thought out story? Did they clearly present the information needed for the viewer to understand the story and or issue at hand? If it was an issue based story, did the reporter provide differing perspectives on that issue? And did the story hold our interest and did it end with a satisfying or thought provoking conclusion? Was it well written? The nominees for Best News Writing High School Division are... Damien Memorial School for Nick Acosta. Nick has turned his struggle into motivation, telling himself to keep going and never give up. H.P. Baldwin High School for Four Sisters Bakery. The Four Sisters Bakery on Vineyard Street in Wailuku has had a lasting impact on the Maui community. Kamehameha School's Kapalama for The Queen's Words. Hawaii's story by Hawaii's Queen in its original publishing was heavily censored by editors on the East Coast. Kapolei High School for Relay for Life. The event itself is a fundraiser as well as a chance for people whose lives have been touched by cancer. And Waianae High School for Heads Up Sports Concussions. In 2009, Chaz suffered a very severe concussion. It left him on the sidelines for more than a month. And the winner for Best News Writing High School Division is... Waianae High School for Heads Up. Congratulations to Waianae High School. I don't remember much, but... I remember I jumped up for a ball, and when I came down, I landed on my neck. And I just blacked out. Wainai High School senior Chaz Bolig is really into football. He's got video games, banners, even signs. I don't know how I'm going to set this up though. He obviously loves to relax off the field. But things take a turn for the serious when he straps on his helmet for the Sea Rider football team. It has proven that Chaz can take down anything on the field, but it's big hits like these that has left many people concerned about an issue that is hard to wrap their head around. A little groggy here. Youth football and head trauma. I lost memory for a very long time. I think it was a week, a whole week. In 2009, Chaz suffered a very severe concussion. It left him on the sidelines for more than a month. Well, during the blackout, like, I felt very lost. Like, I could not speak. So I just was like asking him what happened. It's actually um, an injury to the brain. Liz so. Beaver is one of two athletic trainers responsible for a few hundred athletes at Waianae High. <laughs> Even though only two cases have been reported so far this year, she understands. It's a very serious injury and the more we learn about concussions, the more we know how important it is to treat it properly. When he collapsed on the sidelines. Who is protecting the athlete? New regulations about concussions. High school sports programs from across the nation have put this issue above all else. Locally, Hawaii athletes have to go through numerous steps to even step back onto the field. They have to get a clearance from a physician. Once they get clearance from a physician and they don't have symptoms anymore, then we start on a seven step return to play protocol. So what, you just not gonna, you just gonna wear your helmet today or what? If this protocol isn't followed, it can possibly lead to long-term memory loss and in extreme cases, death. You don't want to think of the, the death part or anything, but it's just more of how is he going to be after he recovers or even if he recovers. Chaz is no stranger to bouncing back. Four years later, it seems there's no lingering effects. Okay, so what if my research question is, um, what makes a good and unique designer toy? The road to recovery was long and difficult, but it'll take more than that to tear Chaz from what defines him. Determination, resilience, and the true strength of an athlete. This is Diamond Tuisano from Waianae High School for Kiki No. 
Moving on to the next category, best personal profile. That's a Hikino story that center, centers around an individual. And judging in this category was based on the following criteria. Did they create a compelling portrait of the featured person? Were they able to use interviews to tell a strong structured story with a distinct beginning, middle, and end? Do you feel we got to know the featured person? Were the visual elements compelling? And did they help to tell the story? And now the nominees for Best Personal Profile High School Division are... Campbell High School for Jazz Sax Player. Saxophone is really my voice, and it's, it's something that lets me speak. Iolani School for Aspiring Filmmaker. So the way I want to see life, I can make it in a video. Lahaina Luna High School for Kimberly Yap. My family's trying to teach me one culture, and then I'm living in another culture, so what culture do I live in? Mid-Pacific Institute for Street Performer. I discovered early on as a young boy that I love to paint, I love to draw. And Waiakea High School for Dance Away the Pain. Honestly, dancing is the best pain medication there is. The winner for Best Personal Profile High School Division is... And we can tell the judges had a hard time. Lahaina Luna High School for Kimberly Yap. Another Maui school, congratulations. Congratulations. Being half Micronesian and half Filipino and coming here, living here, it's hard for me. Kimberly Yap is a senior at Lahaina Luna High School. At the age of five, Kim moved with her parents and a few close family members from Gidibes, a small Micronesian island, to Maui. My family moved here looking for a better life, looking for better education for myself. Right now, our island, Gidibes, is sinking from global warming and there's nothing they can do. There's nothing anybody can do. It just it's a poor community, you know? It hasn't evolved yet into what this world has come to. Me and my family are deciding whether I should go back to my island after graduation or save the money for college. We're just kind of in a stump right now because we don't know what we're gonna do. My family's trying to teach me one culture and then I'm living in another culture, so what, what culture do I live in, you know? My family's very strict. Girls aren't allowed to cut their hair. They're not allowed to dye their hair. You're supposed to live conservative. Being a girl in our tradition, you can't be out late and you, you just have so much rules, you know. You have to be the one to take care of the siblings and cook all the meals. Girls were meant to be, you know, the housewives instead of the um, smart business maker. The main focus or the main cultural thing about Gidibes is just to respect your elders and to respect the ones around you. And I think that's really stuck on to me and it's been like my life. It is who I am and I'm proud of who I am. Not going back home is like losing a big part of my life, but this is home now. I don't want to be a housewife and I think that's why the best choice for me is to go to college. I, I need to grow up and I think going to college, getting a good job, maybe going back home, showing my family that I'm successful in life could really like help us out. This is Sophia Freddy from Lahaina Luna High School for Hiki No. Let's move ahead to the next category, the best home-based school. Now, every Hikino school is hosted by a home-based school. Through the course of the show, the anchors weave a story about their school and community through a series of vignettes. The judging for this category was based on the following criteria. 
the on-camera and or voiceover presence of the anchors, their diction and articulation, <laughs> expressiveness and confidence, the production quality of the anchor shots and accompanying visuals, the creativity and writing quality of the vignette scripts, and how well the vignettes give a sense of what it's like to be a part of the school and or community. And now the nominees for Best Home-Based School High School Division are... Hawaii Preparatory Academy. Pu'ukohola Heiau is believed to be one of the last sacred structures built in the Hawaiian Islands before Western influence. H.P. Baldwin High School. Kepani Vai translates to the damming of the waters as the bodies of the dead warriors block the flow of the river and turn the water a crimson red. Kapa'a High School. Behind me is the historic Hanalei Pier. The pier was built in the late 1800s when Hanalei was one of the major rice growing areas of the island. Lanai High and Elementary School. Today, it is possible to hear the strong winds of the valley whistling through the fortified notches of Ho'okio. And Nanakuli High and Intermediate School. NPAC began in 1991 and has now grown into over 60 students from eight different schools. And the winner for Best Home Based School High School Division is. Go. Nanakuli High and Intermediate School. Nanakuli High and Intermediate, clapping for yourselves right now as well, as well as everybody else in the state. Congratulations. Here's a look at some of the home base vignettes from the winning school, Nanakuli High and Intermediate School. We're back on the campus of Nanakuli High and Intermediate School on the west side of Oahu. NPAC began in 1991 as an after school club and has now grown into a curricular program that has over 60 students from eight different schools. The program had its start on the outdoor stage at Nanakuli High and Intermediate School's B Building. Here students rehearsed and performed using portable lights and cassette tapes to play back soundtracks. back at Nanakuli High and Intermediate School on the west side of Oahu. Since 1996, most of the performances have been in the NHIS multi-purpose cafeteria. At each performance, students must move cafeteria tables, bring out folding chairs, and move platforms in place to transform the cafeteria into a theatrical environment. When the lights go down, the goal is to make audience members forget they are sitting in a cafeteria. We're back on the campus of Nanakuli High and Intermediate School on the west side of Oahu. NPAC not only accepts students from NHIS, but from any public school. NPAC has students from various elementary, intermediate, and high schools on the leeward coast. But NPAC has students who come from as far away as Radford, Moana Loa, and James Campbell High Schools. Most of these students catch a city bus to get to NHIS each day for rehearsals. Once the bus makes its stop on Nanakuli Avenue, the students must walk almost a mile to get to the NHIS campus. The final category is for best overall news story. Judging in this category was based on the following criteria, Donna. Do they tell a compelling, informative story? Do they use an effective combination of imagery, the written word, interview sound bites, and natural sound? Was the pacing in terms of the editing and the speed of the reporter's speaking appropriate to the story being told? Was the reporter's presentation clear and commanding? Did the story offer something of relevance to the general viewing public? Did it follow good journalistic practices? And now the nominees for Best Overall News Story High School Division are... Island School for Albatross. They are loyal and faithful to their chicks, their families, their mates. Kapolei High School for USS Missouri Exhibit. It was really difficult and frustrating because they were all really good photos with good historical significance. Kona Waena High School for Sandy Hook Mural. They're saying, don't let society forget about us. Don't. Maui High School for Same-Sex Weddings. After Hawaii became the 15th state to legalize same-sex marriage, Rebello benefited both personally and professionally. Waianae High School for What's the Catch? 
According to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, more than three quarters of the world's fish stocks are overexploited. And why Pahu High School for Victoria, Cuba? People out there don't have homes. They have a hard time finding a place to sleep. Very tough competition in this category. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and the winner for Best Overall New Story High School Division is... Here's the envelope, guys. Wainai High School. What's the catch? Way to go, Wainai. Congratulations. The environment is all about balance. And when you lose balance, normally what happens is something along that food pyramid crashes. Yeah, I have something. I don't know what it is, though. Cheap or no? Come here. Emil Muraoka lives for the catch. I fish for passion. I fish for excitement. I fish for my own joy. Woo! Live and die for that. Today, he's been lucky, but very soon... Has that thing even seen a nibble yet? His luck will change. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, who estimate that more than three quarters of the world's fish stocks are overexploited. If I couldn't fish anymore, oh... I don't know what I would do. I think I'd be kind of lost. This is an all too real possibility. If the overfishing continues, the world's fish stocks will be depleted by the year 2048, according to a journal in Science Magazine. <sighs> well, I guess it's just break time. Then. But for people like Eileen Bebo and her family, taking a break isn't something they can afford. It started out recreational, and you kind of get hooked on it, so. Um, we do it quite often now, commercially. We ended up with 15 octopus, ranging from eight to 10 pounds. It all depends on the tides and the, the currents. It wasn't always like this, though. We could go really close to shore and catch ahi, and catch six, seven a day within a couple hours, and you can't do that anymore. It's already showed a decline from 30 years ago. And in the next 30 years? We have to be very, very cautious on a worldwide scale, not to over-harvest. As the demand for fish protein goes up, the demand for fish goes up. The ocean has had to keep up with this ever-increasing demand for years. Since 1973, global consumption of fish has doubled, going from 45 million metric tons to over 90 million metric tons consumed during recent years. And so what you want to do is you want to manage the amount of fish that get taken out in a relative ratio so that um, that balance continues to exist. But the balance begins to sink when there's little being done to keep the fish population afloat. People just take what they don't need. They take more than what's given. Will there be a lot of fish around? I don't know. Hopefully we won't have to experience that, but we don't know. That is a fear of the unknown. A fear not only for themselves, but for future generations as well. We want to have fish for our children and our children's children. And the younger fishers are starting to catch on. There's no sense in taking things of which I don't need. There's always a lot for, for other people, so I'd like to share. Emil is doing his part, one fish at a time. First fish is always a throwback fish, so at least we know there's something out there. This is Crystal Sabeto reporting from Waianae High School for Hikino. We want to congratulate all of the winning schools, all the nominees, and every Hikino student and every Hikino teacher for your exceptional work. Uh, this was an extraordinary, extraordinarily close competition, we're told by those who tabulated the results from the judges who all decided in individually and independently. Before we sign off, we'd like to recap all of the 2014 Hikino Award winners. Best News Writing High School Division Award went to Waina High School. The award for Best Personal Profile the High School Division Award went to Lahaina Luna High School. The award for Best Home Based School High School Division went to Nanakuli High and Intermediate School. And the award for Best Overall News Story High School Division went to Waina High School. From the PBS Hawaii Studios in Manoa in Honolulu, Aloha Huiho. Thanks for joining us. This concludes the 2014 Higino Awards. Tune in next week for the premiere episode of the 2014-2015 season of Higino.
Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.